together, we're going to learn about the magic of the Brother 950 electronic knitting machine. With this machine, you can create anything, clothes in all shapes and sizes, in rainbow colours, patterned or ferrile. And you can simply follow the patterns in the book or make up your own. Here to tell us all about the machine is Janet Navney, an English woman who's travelled the world demonstrating knitting machines. She worked for several years in the States and she knows all there is to know about the Brother 950 electronic. Hello, Janet. Well, are you going to let us in on the secret of this incredible machine? This machine certainly does have a lot of amazing possibilities. And providing you push the right buttons to tell the computer what to do, the machine takes all the hard work out of knitting for you. There are 550 stitch patterns that live on a chip in the body of the machine. And you can turn the machine off and on again, and it remembers exactly what you've told it. You can knit the patterns exactly as they appear in your Stitch World book, or you can knit a small section of them, or you can ignore the book completely and knit a design that you've drawn out on the Mylar sheet that comes with the machine. To help us in our instructional video, we've divided it up into five headlines. Simple patterning. <laughs> Advanced patterning, pattern panel, making your own patterns, making your own patterns, and special features. Well, it certainly sounds simple enough, but where on earth do we begin? We turn the machine on and it says hello. It's ready to start. The machine can be programmed in two different ways. We're going to start with simple patterning, so we're going to enter 990 when the ready light comes on. This tells the machine we want to knit the pattern exactly as it appears in the Stitch World book. We've chosen a simple all-over pattern to begin number 17. Right, now we're ready to start. We'll go through it from the beginning. The ready light is on and we're going to enter 990. Remember it's a simple pattern. Press the memory button and the 990 disappears. Press the memory button again and the pattern number light comes on. We'll put the pattern selector switch down to the bottom opposite the diagram of the garment with the all over pattern. Enter 17, that's the number of the stitch pattern we want to knit, and press the memory button. The ready light comes on again, and we'll press CF just to make sure that the pattern starts knitting on row one. Now we have to begin by taking the carriage outside the left hand turn mark. Turn the change knob to KC1 and take the carriage across. That connects the pattern to the needles. Thread up the second colour yarn and tell the carriage you want to knit two colours in a row by pushing the multicolour button. Now we can knit our pattern. This is the reverse of your pattern knitting. When you are about to come to the end of your stitch pattern, the machine will tell you by making a loud beep. 
the numbers that appear in the panel window correspond to the row number of your stitch pattern. Your needles have been selected for the last row. You can knit this last row and then you have the choice of turning off the pattern or continuing it because the machine will automatically return to the beginning of the pattern. We've just knit the pattern all over the garment. This time we're going to knit only one repeat of the pattern as a single motif. We can place this single motif anywhere we like on the needle bed, but to help us, the needles have been numbered from zero in the middle outwards. All the numbers on the left are orange, and all the numbers on the right are green. Our pattern is going to be 24 stitches wide, and we're going to put it this time right in the middle of our needle bed, and this is how we begin. The ready light comes on, press the memory button, the pattern number light comes on. Put the pattern selector switch up to the top, opposite the garment, with the two boats. Enter the number of our pattern, which is 17. Press the memory button. The light in the middle of the boats on the garment lights up. Our pattern is 24 stitches wide, and we're going to place it in the middle of our garment, so it's going to run from orange 12 to green 12. The machine is asking us now where we want the edge of our pattern, the first needle position of our motif. We want the edge of our pattern at the edge of our patterning needles, so we'll enter orange 12 and press the memory button. Now the machine has lit up again, and it's asking us where we want our patterning to begin. We want the patterning to begin on orange 12, enter and press the memory button. Now the light has lit up at the end of the boats. The machine's now asking us where we want the patterning to finish. We want the patterning to finish on green 12. Enter green 12 and press the memory button. The light in the panel has lit up saying one. That means the machine's ready to begin knitting on row one of our stitch pattern. Now we've used this pattern as an all over pattern and we've knitted it as a single motif just as it appears in our Stitch World book. With a bit of reprogramming though we can turn that diamond into a cross. To explain what I mean it's easier to demonstrate with this. We want the edge of the pattern in the middle of our patterning needles. Let's knit it on the machine. When the ready light comes on press the memory button and the pattern number lights up. Put the pattern selector switch up to the top for a single motif. Enter our pattern number, 17, and press the memory button. The light between the boats on the garment comes on. The machine is asking us where we want the edge of our pattern, the first needle position. We want the edge of the pattern in the middle of our patterning needles. So we're going to enter green one. Press the memory button and the light at the left-hand edge of the boats comes on. The machine is asking us where we want our patterning to begin. Enter orange 12, press the memory button. The light at the right-hand edge of the boats comes on. The machine's asking us where we want the patterning to finish. Enter green 12 and press the memory button and we're ready to begin knitting. And this is our cross. But what if you want to knit two different patterns on each side of the jumper, say a cross on one side and a diamond on the other? How on earth do you do that? Ah, oh, well, that's not difficult. We'll put our diamond over here. We'll have the center 24 stitches knitting plain stocking stitch. And then we'll program separately motif B, the cross, to knit on this side of our garment. When the ready light comes on, press the memory button and the pattern number lights up. This time we're going to put the pattern selector switch to the middle, opposite the garment with the boat and the house. This means we want to knit motif A and B. We enter the pattern number 17 and press the memory button. The light in the middle of the boats on the garment lights up. 
Our first pattern is 24 stitches wide and we want it on the left hand side of our machine from orange 36 to orange 13 inclusive. The light is asking us where we want the edge of our pattern. We're going to have the edge of our pattern at the edge of the patterning needles, so we'll enter orange 36 and press the memory button. Where do we want the pattern to begin? We'll enter orange 36, press the memory button, and where do we want the pattern to finish? We'll enter orange 13 and press the memory button. Right, that takes care of our first pattern. Now we want 24 stitches plain knitting in the center and we have to tell the machine about the second pattern, the cross, on the other side of the knitting. The light in the middle of the houses has come on. And the machine is asking us where we want the edge of our pattern. If our pattern is 24 stitches wide, we'll have it from green 13 to green 36, leaving the central needles knitting plain stocking stitch. The edge of the pattern will be in the middle of the patterning needles. So we enter green 24, press the memory button, the machine lights up and it's asking us where we want the patterning to begin. Enter green 13 and press the memory button. The machine lights up again and asks us where do we want the patterning to finish. Enter green 36 and press the memory button. The ready light comes on, the machine is telling us it's ready to knit the pattern. There's our pattern, with a diamond on one side and the cross on the other. Well, Wendy, how is that? Have you been following the programming procedures? I think I have, Janet. To sum up, you must remember to press the memory button after each command that you give the machine. That's right. And to follow logically what the machine is telling you logically. And if you follow the lights, then you really can't go wrong. That's right. Every time a light comes on, you remember the machine is asking you a question. Now we're going to be a little bit more adventurous. We're going to knit a pattern from the Stitch World book, but we're going to alter it and we're only going to knit a small section of it, the leaf. To knit a more advanced pattern, you enter 999 when the ready light comes on. That's telling the machine you don't want to knit the whole pattern, but a small section of it. Pattern number light lights up and you put the selector switch at the bottom to make sure you're going to get your pattern all over. Enter 100 to tell the machine that's the number of the pattern in your Stitch World book. Press the memory button and the light at the bottom of the boat on the card comes up. Now the card represents your pattern as it appears in the Stitch World book and the boat is that section of the pattern that you want to knit. The machine is asking you what's the bottom line of your pattern. Now we go to the picture in our book. The pattern starts on row one but we want to knit the leaf and that starts on row 31. So we'll enter 31, press the memory button. The top line, the leaf finishes on row 40. Press the memory button. The machine is asking us how wide we want our stitch pattern. We'll have the leaf plus two stitches. So counting from the left, we'll start on stitch six and we'll finish on stitch 20. Press the memory button and the light in the middle of the two boats on the garment lights up. Even though we're knitting an all-over pattern, the machine still wants to know exactly where we want our leaf. We'll have it in the middle, so we'll start the leaf on orange 8. Press the memory button, the ready light comes on, and 31 appears in our panel. The machine is telling us it's ready to knit the pattern starting at row 31. When you're about to knit the last row of one complete repeat of the pattern, you heard that beep. The machine was telling you you're about to finish the row. So your needles have been selected for the last row. You begin to move the carriage across to knit this row. You'll see the number in the pattern window go back to 31. That's telling you the machine is ready to start on the first row of the pattern again. At this point, you can turn the pattern off and that cancels your patterning buttons and you can knit several rows 
of plain knitting even though the needles have been selected. If you want to knit another row of leaves, but you want to move them down one, we have to press the memory button and the pattern number comes on, but we don't want to change any of the information we've put in before until we get to the light in the middle of the boats on the garment. It says orange eight, but if we want to move the leaves down a bit, we have to reprogram this. We'll enter green one, press the memory button, press CF to make absolutely sure we're going to start on row one of the pattern and we're ready to begin again. Turn the knob, There's our pattern. So when you alter a pattern, what are the main points you have to remember? Well, really, basically, what you have to start off with is you have to count the stitches on your graph very carefully. Then you have to decide exactly where you want this pattern on your needle bed, so you have to count the needle bed stitches. Then you have to decide where you want the edge of your pattern. That is the first needle position, so that you can put that in your program. Fine, so what are you going to do now? Ah, well, now I thought I'd take one of the basic patterns from the Stitch World book, The Cherries, and I'd knit only a small section of it as a single motif, placing it carefully on my needle bed. Let's have a big one in the middle with a little cherry on either side. The ready light comes on, enter 999 for advanced programming, and press the memory button. 999 disappears, press the memory button again, and the pattern number light comes on. We'll put the pattern selector switch up to the top, opposite the garment with the boats on it, to tell the machine we want to knit a single motif. We'll enter 100 to tell the machine which stitch pattern we want to use, and press the memory button. The light at the bottom of the boat on the card comes on. The machine's asking us, on the picture, what's the bottom line of our graph? The bottom line is one, press the memory button. The top light comes on. The machine is asking us where we want to finish our pattern. We'll finish at 14, press the memory button. The light at the left of the boats comes on, and the machine is asking us where on our graph we want to begin our patterning. We'll begin at stitch one, press the memory button, the light at the right-hand side of the boat comes on, and the machine is asking us where we want to finish our pattern. We'll finish on stitch 20. Now, this pattern is 20 stitches wide, but remember we're going to add a small cherry, so we're going to need another eight stitches for this little cherry, so the pattern has to go over 28 stitches. We've decided to put it in the middle of our garment this time, so we'll have it run from orange 14 to green 14. And because the little cherry is the beginning of the pattern, that's where the pattern will begin at the beginning of the patterning needles. Press the memory button and the light between the two boats comes on. The machine's asking us where we want the edge of our motif. We'll have it at the edge of the patterning needles. Enter orange 14. Press the memory button and the light at the left-hand side of the boat comes on. The machine's asking us where we want the patterning on our needles to begin. Orange, 14, press the memory button. The light at the right-hand side of the boat comes on, and the machine is asking us where we want our needles to stop patterning. Green, 14, press the memory button, and the ready light comes on, and the machine says it's ready to begin knitting the pattern on row one. We put the change knob to KC2 because we're going to knit a single motif.
And here's a sample of our single motif. Well, we've just knit a single motif with a little cherry, big cherry, little cherry. Now let's shuffle them around a little bit and we'll knit another single motif, but this time we'll change the order of the cherries. We'll have a big cherry on the outside, then a little cherry, and finish with another big cherry. We'll start our programming. The ready light is on. Enter 999. Press the memory button until the pattern number light comes on. Put the pattern selector switch up to the top opposite the garment with the two boats on it. Enter the number of our stitch pattern, 100. Press the memory button. The light on the bottom of the boat on the card comes on. The machine's asking us, where's the bottom line of our pattern on the graph? The bottom line is 1. Press the memory button. The light at the top of the boat comes on. The machine's asking us where on the graph we want to finish our pattern. Enter 14. Press the memory button. The light at the left of the boat comes on. The machine's asking us where we want the first stitch of our pattern to be on the graph. Enter 1. Press the memory button. The light at the right-hand edge of the boat comes on. The machine's asking us where on the graph we want to finish our patterning. Enter 20, press the memory button. This time our motif is still 20 stitches wide, but we've added a big cherry, which is 12 stitches rather than the little cherry, which was eight. So we're going to need more needles for our motif. We're going to have to pattern across 32 needles this time. If we put our patterning in the middle of our needle bed, the patterning will run from orange 16 to green 16. The machine is asking us where we want the edge of our motif to begin, the first needle position. The edge of the graph is the little cherry and we want to leave 12 stitches for a big cherry, so we'll start the repeat of the pattern. We'll put the edge of the pattern, the first needle position, at orange four. Press the memory button and the light at the left of the boat on the garments comes on. The machine asks us where we want the patterning needles to begin. We'll begin the patterning at orange 16. Press the memory button. The light at the right hand edge of the boats on the garment comes on and the machine is asking us where we want to finish our patterning. We'll enter green 16 and press the memory button and the ready light comes on. The machine says it's ready to start our patterning on row one. Turn the change knob to KC2 when you have the carriage outside the turn mark for a single motif. And there's a sample of our finished single motif. Now we'll use our pattern selector switch again, and we're going to knit two motifs separately this time. We'll knit one on the garment on the left and one on the garment on the right. We'll have eight stitches in the middle, knitting plain stocking stitch. We'll use the same motifs we've just knit as single motifs. When the ready light comes on, enter 999 and press the memory button. Press the memory button until the pattern number light comes on and move our pattern selector switch to the middle opposite the garment with the boat and the house. Enter the pattern number, 100. Press the memory button and the light at the bottom of the boat on the card comes on. The machine is asking us where on the graph we want our pattern to begin. We'll begin at row one, press the memory button. The light at the top of the boat comes on. The machine's asking us 
What row do we want our pattern to finish on? We'll finish on 14. Press the memory button. The light at the left of the boat comes on. Where on our graph do we want the stitch pattern to begin? On stitch one. Press the memory button. Where on the graph do we want it to end? Press 20 and the memory button. Now, you remember our first motif needed 28 stitches because we wanted a little cherry, which was eight stitches, along with the 20 stitches we needed for the motif. If the pattern is on the left-hand side of our garment, it will run from orange 32 to orange 5, leaving the central eight stitches plain. Where is the edge of our motif? The edge of our motif is at the edge of our patterning needles, so when the light between the boats on the garment comes on, asking us what the first needle position is, we'll enter orange 32. Press the memory button. The light at the left of the boats comes on, and the machine's asking us where we want our needles to start patterning. Orange 32. Press the memory button. The light at the right edge of the boats comes on. Where do we want the needles to stop this pattern? We'll have it stop at orange 5. Press the memory button. Now we move on to the second card with the boat and the house. The light at the left of the house has come on and the machine is asking us on the graph where do we want our stitch pattern to begin? we'll have the same motif again. So we'll enter one, press the memory button. Where do we want our motif to finish? We'll enter 20, press the memory button. Our second motif, if you remember, needed more needles because this time we had two big cherries with a little cherry. So we needed the 20 stitches for the motif plus 12 stitches for the big cherry. We'll have this pattern on the right side of our garment, starting from green 5 and ending at green 36. We want the edge of the motif, the edge of the little cherry, not at the edge of our patterning this time, because we've got to leave 12 stitches for our big cherry. So we'll have the edge of our pattern at green 17. Press the memory button. The light at the left of the houses on the garment lights up. The machine is asking us where we want our patterning to begin on the needle bed. We'll enter green, five. Press the memory button. Where do we want the patterning to end on the needle bed? We'll press green, 36, and the memory button, and the ready light comes on. Number one appears in our pattern panel window. The machine's telling us it's ready to start knitting the pattern at row one. Turn the change knob to KC2 when you've taken the carriage outside the turn mark. Here's a sample of our knitting pattern. We've just used our pattern selector switch to knit two separate motifs on our garment, one on the left and one on the right. We're going to use the pattern selector switch again, but this time we're going to have a different second motif. We'll do away with the small cherries entirely and we'll just knit two big cherries. We'll have a small part of our graph as we see it in the Stitch World book. The ready light comes on, we'll enter 999. Press the memory button. The pattern number light comes on. We'll put the pattern selector switch to the middle opposite the house and the boat two motifs, A and B. We'll enter 100 for our stitch pattern, press the memory button, 
the light on the bottom of the boat on the card comes on, the machine's asking us where we want our pattern to begin. The bottom of the cherries is row one. Press the memory button. The light at the top of the boat comes on. Our cherries finishes on row 14. Press the memory button. The light at the left of the boat comes on. The left edge of our graph is one. Press the memory button. The light on the right of the boats comes on. We can see the edge of our motif is 20. Press the memory button. Now, we need 28 stitches for this first motif, and we're going to have the central eight in plain stocking stitch. So our motif will go from orange 32 to orange 5. We're still going to have the edge of our graph on the edge of our patterning needles. The machine is asking us where we want our first needle position, the edge of our picture to be. We'll enter orange 32, press the memory button. Where do we want our patterning to begin on the garment? We'll enter orange 32, press the memory button. Where do we want our patterning to finish? We'll enter orange 5, and press the memory button. The light at the left of the house on the card has come up, and the machine is asking us about the motif that we're going to knit on the other side of our garment. We don't want to knit the little cherry this time. If we look at the graph, the big cherry begins on stitch 10. So we'll enter 10. Press the memory button. We'll look at the graph again, and the cherry finishes on 19, but we don't want our cherries to kiss when we knit them. So we'll finish the pattern on stitch 20, leaving a spare stitch between the cherries. Press the memory button. We'll knit two cherries, so we'll have our cherries begin on green 5, and we'll need to finish on green 26. The machine is asking us where we want the edge of our pattern to be. We'll have the edge of our motif, the first needle position, at the edge of our patterning needles. So we'll start on green 5, and we'll pattern on green 5. And we'll finish our patterning on green 26. The ready light has come on. The machine is ready to knit the motif. Take the carriage past the turn mark and turn the change knob to KC2 for single motif. And here's a sample of our knitted motifs. The main point about this last exercise is that you've really got to be very careful when you're programming, and you've got to make all your calculations very logically. Yes, as I watch you develop the theme from the more simple to the more advanced techniques, it seems to me that the system's been emerging. What you have to remember is where you're working on the needle bed. Remembering that the center is O, zero, and that all the numbers to the left are orange and all the numbers to the right are green. Then you've got to think about how many stitches there are in your pattern repeat. And where do you want the pattern on the garment? How many needles do you think you'll need? And where is the edge of the pattern on the paper, the first needle position? And although I've mentioned that last, it is in fact the first thing that the machine will ask you. This is certainly true. And to help you, if you have any problems placing the pattern on the garment, you can always just physically count your needles out like that. Mm -hmm. Well, we're still working with the advanced patterning technique. So what on earth are we going to do now? Ah, next we have something very special in store because next we're going to pattern two separate motifs and we're going to put the second motif on top of the first motif. This pattern can only be done on our electronic machine. It's amazing. Let's look at the graph for pattern 37 in the Stitch World book. The ready light comes on and we'll enter 999 and press the memory button. 
999 disappears, press the memory button again and the pattern number light comes on. We'll put the pattern selector switch to the center opposite the boat and the house for two motifs. Enter 37, which is our pattern number, and press the memory button. The light at the bottom of the boat comes on. The machine is asking us where on the graph we want our pattern to begin. Enter 1, press the memory button. The light at the top of the boat comes on. The machine is asking us where we want the pattern to finish. The top line is 18, press the memory button. The light at the left of the boat comes on and the machine is asking us what do we want the left edge of our pattern to be? We're going to use an all over one by one pattern as a background. This pattern is on our graph on lines 25 and 26. Enter 25 and press the memory button. Now the light at the right edge of the boat comes on. We can enter 26 and press the memory button. Now the light in between the two boats on the garment lights up. Where do we want the first needle of our pattern repeat to be? As the pattern's only two lines wide, we can have it anywhere. So we'll enter green one and press the memory button. The light at the left edge of the boats comes on and the machine's asking, what needles do we want to include in the pattern? We really want the pattern to be over the whole needle bed so that we can increase without worrying about the pattern moving. So we enter orange 100, press the memory button, where do we want the patterning to finish? We'll have the patterning finish at green 100. Press the memory button. Now the light at the left edge of the house on the cards lights up. What section of the pattern on the graph are we going to isolate for motif B? Let's put one repeat of our geometric pattern in the middle of our knitting right on top of our all over one by one pattern. The left edge of the geometric pattern is nine. Enter nine. Press the memory button. The light at the right edge of the house comes on and the machine is asking, where does the pattern on the graph end? Enter 24 and press the memory button. The light in between the two houses on the garment lights up. Where does our pattern repeat begin? Where is the edge of our pattern? The pattern needs 16 needles to complete one repeat. If we put it right in the middle of our knitting, it'll go from orange 8 to green 8. If we have the edge of the pattern, the first needle position, on the edge of the patterning needles, the first needle position is orange 8. Press the memory button. The light at the left of the houses lights up. Where do we want this pattern to begin? We'll enter orange 8. Press the memory button. And where do we want this pattern to end? The light at the right of the houses comes on. We'll enter green 8 and press the memory button. Now we're ready to start knitting. is our knitted pattern. We found out how to use the programs that live in the machine from the Stitchwell book in both a simple and an advanced way. But what other advantages has this magic machine got? Well, there's a special window on our pattern panel that gives us extra information. It helps us when we're knitting multicolored fair isle patterns and it helps us when we're knitting lace. If we program in a multicolored fair isle pattern, the window will tell us when to change the yarn in feeder B. Let's program the machine to knit fair isle pattern 77. Now I'm sure you can remember what to do. The ready light comes on, enter 990 for simple patterning and press the memory button. 990 disappears, press the memory button again and the pattern number light comes on. Put the pattern selector switch to the bottom for all over patterning and enter 77 for our stitch pattern. Press the memory button and the ready light comes on and tells us the machine is ready to begin knitting. Take the carriage outside the turn mark 
and turn the change knob to KC1 to get the pattern connected to the needles. Knit one row and now we press the yellow button and the number in the panel window tells us what color yarn we want to put in the second feeder for our multicolored pattern. Number one is always the main yarn and we can see number two in the window. Press the multicolor button to tell the carriage to knit Fair Isle. Now if we look at the panel window we can see number three has come up. This means we've got to take number two out and put in color three. Then we continue knitting. Now we can see number fours come up in our panel window. So we'll take number three out and put in color number four. any time we can press the green button and the number in the panel will revert back to the row number of our stitch pattern. We press the yellow button again and it tells us what the color of our contrast yarn should be. And here is a sample of the knitted fabric. When you want to knit a lace pattern, the information you're going to need from your pattern panel window is going to be quite different. Now you're going to have to know when to move the lace carriage and when to move the knitting carriage. Let's program a lace pattern. When the ready light is on, we enter 990 and press the memory button. 990 vanishes and we press the memory button again and the pattern number light comes on. Put the pattern selector switch to the bottom for an all over pattern and enter 130, which is the number of our lace pattern. Press the memory button and the machine is ready to start knitting. Now we have to know when to use the lace carriage and when to use the knitting carriage. So we'll press the yellow button and look in the panel. It's blank. That means we use the lace carriage. We can see number two has come up in the panel window now. The machine is telling us to knit two rows with our knitting carriage. Use the lace carriage again and the window goes blank. Two comes up again. That means we've got to knit two rows with the knitting carriage. Back to the lace carriage. Now the knitting carriage. And here's our lace. We've seen how the pattern panel window helps us when we're doing normal lace. But now we're going to combine normal lace with fine lace. Let's program a lace pattern. Switch the machine on. When the ready light comes on, enter 990, press the memory button. Until the pattern number light comes on, enter 221 for our lace pattern and press the memory button. The ready light comes on, the machine's ready to start knitting, but let's press the yellow button to see what information we can get from the panel. There's a zero flashing in the panel, and that's telling us that we want our lace carriage to have the switch on N for open lace. Move the lace carriage until we have a flashing one, that tells us that we have to alter the switch on our lace carriage to F for fine lace. Now we see two in the window. The machine is telling us to knit two rows with our knitting carriage. 
The flashing O comes on again, and we move the switch to N for open lace. Now we have a flashing one, so we move the switch to F for fine lace. Now we have two. That's telling us that we want to knit two rows with our knitting carriage. Flashing O, move the switch to N. Flashing one, move the switch to F for fine lace. Two, which isn't flashing, and we'll knit two rows with our knitting carriage. Here's a sample of our lace and fine lace combined. There are some switches on our panel that we haven't talked about yet. These are the pattern variation switches on the left hand side and you may have wondered what they do. Each one has a different job to do. So the machine continues to take the hard work out of the knitting. Can you talk us through what each of those switches does? Yes of course. If we look at the sample on the bottom we see the pattern exactly as it appears in the Stitch World book. Now if we move up, we see what happens when we put switch number one up. This will reverse our pattern. Move up again, and we see what happens when we put switch number three and switch number four up. Switch number three will double the width of our pattern. Switch number four doubles the length. Move on to the next sample, and we can see what happens when we put switch number five up. We'll start knitting our pattern at the bottom, and when we get to the top, instead of going back to the beginning again, we knit the pattern from the top back down again to the bottom. That's on simple patterning. If we had advanced patterning, we would just knit that motif upside down all the time. With the next sample, we can see what happens when we put switch number six up. This reverses our needle selection system so that the needles that knit the background before now knit contrast, and the needles that knit the contrast color before now knit the background. On our last sample, this shows what happens when we put switch number seven up. This enables us to knit a double bed jacquard fabric with the ribber and the color changer. This means we get a fabric with no floats on the back. That's pretty incredible, Janet. But I noticed you didn't mention switch number two. What does that one do? Ah, you've caught me out there. Switch number two is our very special switch. You remember when I said we put switch number one up and it reversed the first motif that we programmed in, motif A? Mm -hmm. If we put switch number two up, we're reversing motif B, our second motif. That is all the information we put on the pattern panel on the second half of our patterning. So the capability of the pattern panel really makes the Brother 950 Electronic absolutely unique. This is certainly true. In addition to the stitch patterns that are on the chip that lives in the machine, there's a blank space for storing our own designs. Mm. We can put our own designs in and they'll stay there until we put a new one in a place. That space is exactly 150 rows long and 60 stitches wide, the same size as our Mylar sheet. Can we draw literally anything on the Mylar sheet? Absolutely anything. Come and I'll show you. It's a good idea when you're doing your designs to try them out on a paper design sheet first before you transfer them onto the Mylar sheet. Mm -hmm. Remember, every square is a stitch. I'll show you how to mark the sheet. We'll use these three designs. At the bottom we have a boat and house, then we've got a lace pattern, and I've got my signature, <laughs> but of course you'll put your own where mine was. When you mark the card, you'll use a special pen, mm -hmm. you press the tip to get the ink flowing, and then stop because you don't want the ink to flood. You actually use the pen very gently when you mark the sheet. Line the sheet up carefully. That's quite important, is it? Oh, absolutely. And then, when you're marking your designs, dot the paper very gently with your pen. 
take you quite a time to do that accurately. You start from the top and work down, start from the left and work across. With this first pattern, we can mark the colour changes in the right-hand column. With the lace pattern, we can mark the left-hand column to tell us when to move our knitting carriage. Mm -hmm. What about the signature? Any problems with that? Well, I would suggest when you're doing your signature on your paper design sheet, you use a broad felt-tipped pen because when you transfer it to the Mylar sheet, it's easier to transfer and it makes a more effective pattern. Right, Wendy, I can see you finished marking the card. That's lovely. Now let's put it in the machine and see how it knits up. We enter it in the card slot. We have to do this with the machine turned off. We can't move the card when the machine is turned on. Right. You have to be accurate about this, presumably. Yes, you see that set line? Mm -hmm. We have to line that up very carefully before we turn the machine on. Once we've turned the machine on, we can program it. Ready light comes on. Push the memory button and the pattern number light comes on. We have to tell the machine we want it to go to the Mylar sheet to read. Enter 901. Press the memory button. The light at the bottom of the boat lights up. The machine is asking us what the bottom line on the card is. If we look on the right hand side, we can see the lines are numbered. The bottom line is 1. Enter 1, press the memory button. The top line is 36, press the memory button. The machine is asking us where the left edge of our pattern on the card is. If we look along the bottom, we can see that stitches are numbered. The left edge is 1. Where does the pattern finish? We can see the stitches at the bottom are numbered up to 40, mm -hmm. so we'll enter 40. Press the memory button and the ready light comes on. Now we have to tell the machine to go and read the card, so we press CF. What does that mean? Oh, card forward? Yes, of course. The machine is now reading the information on the Mylar sheet. When it's finished, it returns to row one. If the red arrow light came on, the machine would be telling us that we had forgotten to wipe off the previous pattern we had stored on the chip. So we would have to push the red CE button and then RR to wipe off that previous pattern before we could begin again. I see. Take the carriage outside the turn mark and turn the change knob round to KC1. Knit a row to set our needles. Put the second colour in the second feeder and press the MC button to tell the machine we want to do multicolour knitting. You heard the beep beep and you saw the card go back to row one. That was the machine finishing the pattern. And here's an example of what we've just knitted. Right, Wendy, now I'd like to show you how we can put all the information from your card into the machine and then we can call up only a small section of it to knit separately. We could knit an all-over pattern from one part of the card mm -hmm. and motif A, your signature, from another part of the card. And then we can knit the house and the boat separately as motif A and motif B. We put the card in and line the set line up just as we did before, turn the machine on and we're ready to begin programming. The ready light is on, press the memory button, the pattern number light comes up. We've got to tell the machine that we want to look at the Mylar card, so we'll put in 901. Press the memory button and the bottom of the boat lights up. As we're putting the whole card in, we'll just enter number one at this point. The top of the boat lights up and the machine is asking us where we want to stop reading the Mylar sheet. We'll read the whole sheet, so we put in 150. Press the memory button. At the left, the sheet begins at stitch one. 
press the memory button at the right, the, the sheet ends at stitch 60. Press the memory button. Now we're ready to tell the machine to read the sheet. Press CF. And off it goes. That's right. What is it actually doing? Is it reading every line? Now? Yes, what we're seeing now is the machine carefully reading all the information that you've recorded and it reads it line by line and stores it on that space we talked about on the chip. We have to wait for it to go right to the end of the card. And when it's come to the end, it tells us it's ready to begin again. By rolling back to the first line. Very easy. Now we're ready to reprogram the machine to knit the lace as an all over pattern. We go back to the pattern panel, press the memory button. When the pattern number light comes up, enter 901 for the Mylar sheet. Press the memory button, and the machine is asking us, what's the bottom line of our stitch pattern? The bottom line of the lace is 41. Press the memory button. The top line of the lace is 80. Press the memory button. The left line of our lace pattern is 1. Press the memory button. The right edge is 30. Press the memory button. And the ready light comes on. Now we have to program in the first row and tell the machine to go and read that row on the Mylar sheet. So we enter the number of the first row, which was 41, and press CF. And we're ready to begin. And here's a sample of our lace knitting. Well, now, Wendy, comes an exciting moment. <laughs> We're going to take your signature and put it on our knitting. Right. But we have to remember to put switch number one up, otherwise we'll have it backwards. <laughs> that would never do, would it? Certainly not. <laughs> the ready light comes on and we'll program it in. Press the memory button, the pattern number light comes on, we enter 901 for the Mylar sheet, and we'll put our pattern selector switch up to the top for a single motif. Press the memory button, and the bottom of the boat lights up on the card. The machine's asking where your signature begins. It begins on row 130. Press the memory button. The signature ends on row 147. Press the memory button. The signature begins on stitch 10. Press the memory button. And it ends on 48. Press the memory button. Your signature is 39 stitches wide. We're going to have it centrally on our knitting, so we'll have it go from orange 19 to green 20, and we'll have the edge of the pattern on the edge of the patterning needles. We enter orange 19 for the edge of the pattern, and now we enter orange 19 for the edge of the patterning needles. We want the pattern to finish on green 20. Press the memory button, and we're ready to knit. But we have to tell the machine to go to that part of the Mylar card first. So we enter the bottom row of the pattern and press CF. Mm -hmm. It's off. Right. Turn the change knob round to KC2 for a single motif. And we've selected our needles. Put the second colour in, push the multicolour button, and we're off. The pattern's gone back to the first row. Mm -hmm. And here's a sample of our knitted name.
Well, we've knit your signature, Wendy, but we've still got one trick left up our sleeve. We're going to knit the house and the boat as two separate single motifs. Right. We'll program the machine. Press the memory button and the pattern number light lights up. We're still looking at the Mylar sheet, so we enter 901. Put the pattern selector switch to the middle to help us do our two separate motifs. Press the memory button and the bottom of the boat lights up. The machine is asking us where on the Mylar sheet our pattern begins. Enter 1, press the memory button. Where does our pattern end? Line 36, press the memory button. What's the left hand edge of the boat? That begins at 1, press the memory button. The boat finishes at 19, press the memory button. Now we're going to put that pattern on the left hand side of our knitting from orange 39 to orange 21 and we're going to have the edge of the boat on the edge of the patterning needles. So we enter orange 39 for the edge of the boat and orange 39 for the edge of our patterning needles. We want the pattern to finish on orange 21. Well that takes care of our first motif, the boat. Now let's do the house. The left hand side of the house has lit up and the machine is asking us where on our mylar sheet the house begins. The house begins on line 20. Press the memory button. Where does the house finish? The house finishes on line 40. Press the memory button. We're going to put the house on the right hand side of our knitting from green 21 to green 40 and we're going to have the edge of the house on the edge of our patterning needles. So we enter green 21 for the edge of our house and green 21 for the edge of our patterning needles. The house will finish at green 40. We've told the machine where to look for the pattern on the mylar sheet and now we have to tell it to go and do that. So we enter one card forward. Now we're ready to begin knitting. You can see from the marks we made in the right hand column mm -hmm. that I've got to change my yarn here. Touch of white. And I've got to change my yarn again. It's look pretty jazzy when I think. <laughs> and here's a sample that I've knit up. Your 950i has a much bigger memory than the 950. In fact, it frees you to design your patterns up to 200 stitches wide. It will remember the information on from 26 to 28 mylar sheets at a time. If you think of the machine as a bowl and your mylar sheets as marbles, you can drop up to 28 marbles into your bowl, either singly or in units, and you can take them out in the same way. Let's see how the pattern sheets help us to do our design. Each pattern sheet is 60 stitches wide and 150 rows long. So if you want your pattern to be wider than 60 stitches or longer than 150 rows, you'll need to use more than one mylar sheet. The machine reads the sheets consecutively in order, numbering them as it goes starting from the bottom left-hand corner and going along the bottom row until it comes to the end of the pattern and then moving up to the next row, starting again at the left-hand side and going along that row. 
If you want your pattern to be 200 stitches wide, you will need four cards and the machine will read the cards up to the 20th stitch on the left hand side of the last one. Then it will move up to the next row and begin again at the left hand side. If you do a design which is diagonally across your sheets and you find one of them is blank, you'll still have to include that when you ask the machine to read your pattern. Now let's see how we use our paper pattern sheets to do a design. Here's a pattern I've drawn out on my design sheets. It's 120 stitches wide but less than 150 rows long, so I'll need two sheets for this pattern. I stuck two paper sheets together to make it easier for me to draw out. Now that I've done the drawing, I take my mylar sheet and place it carefully over the drawing and mark the drawing out with a special pen provided. Now when I've finished the cards, I'll number them one and two. Let's put them into the machine. Turn the machine on and the ready light comes on. I'm going to enter 777. This is the mode number that's telling the machine I wanted to read a pattern from my Mylar sheets. Press the memory button and the pattern number light comes on. There's a number in the window, 901. This is the number the machine has allocated to this particular pattern, which will be stored in the memory of the machine as part of my library of stitch patterns, so I must remember it when I want to knit the pattern again. Press the memory button and the light on either side of the boat on the card comes up. These lights are asking me how many cards wide my pattern is. The pattern's 120 stitches, so it's two cards wide. Enter two, press the memory button. The light at the top and the bottom of the boat on the card comes up. The machine is asking me how many cards high my pattern is. My pattern's less than 150 rows, so it's only one card high. Enter number one and press the memory button. The ready light comes on and number one appears in the window. The machine is telling me it is ready to read card one of my pattern. Turn the machine off and enter the card in the card inlet slot. Roll it down so it's lined up with a set line just above the card inlet slot. Turn the machine on, press CF, and the machine is reading the pattern row by row. When it's finished reading card number one, it spits the card back out at me, turn the machine off again, enter card number two. Line it up at the set line, turn the machine on, press CF, Now it's finished reading the second card of the pattern and you can go straight on and knit this pattern. We've already stored all the pattern information into the memory in the machine, but if we want additional information while we knit, we can use the card to give us this. Turn the machine off and enter the card in the card inlet slot. Line it up with a set line and turn the machine on. Tell the machine you want it to go to the bottom row of your pattern. In this case, it's three, and press CF. Take the carriage outside the turn mark. Move the change knob to KC1, and bring the carriage back to select your needles. You can see the needles that have been selected are the same as the pattern that is, as it appears at the top of the card inlet slot. Now you're ready to put your second colour in the carriage, push the multicolour button and knit your pattern. And this is the knitted sample. When you finish knitting your pattern and you've used the card to give you additional information, remember to press your RR button before you remove the card from the machine. 
We've knitted one whole pattern. Now let's knit a small section of a larger pattern as an all over design. This pattern is 180 stitches wide and 220 rows long, so I've used six mylar sheets. I'm just going to knit this small section. If we look at the bottom line of the pattern, it's line 11. But this card is the second one up from the bottom of the pattern, so I add 150 rows to my 11, giving me 161 for the bottom line of this section. If we look at the left-hand edge, we want to start the pattern at stitch 12. But this is the second card from the left edge of the pattern, so I'll have to add 60 stitches to my 12 to give me the left-hand edge of my section, making 72. Now let's put this on the machine. Turn the machine on and the ready light comes on. Because we're knitting a small section, we enter 999, press the memory button, until the pattern number light comes on. This pattern's already been stored in the machine under number 902. Press the memory button and the light at the bottom of the boat on the card comes up. The machine is asking us what the bottom line of our pattern is. Remember, the bottom line of our pattern is 161. Press the memory button. What's the top line of our pattern? The top line of our pattern is 211. Press the memory button. The light on the left of the boat on the card comes up. What's the left edge of our pattern? You remember the left edge of our pattern is 72. Press the memory button. The light at the right of the boat comes up. What's the right edge of our pattern? The right edge of our pattern is 109. Press the memory button and the light in the middle of the boats on the garment lights up. Where do we want the edge of our pattern? We'll have the edge of our pattern in the middle of our knitting, so we enter green one. Press the memory button and the ready light comes on. The machine is ready to begin knitting the pattern. Take the carriage outside the change mark. Tell the machine to go to the bottom row of the section you've selected, one, six, one, Press CF, turn the change knob on the carriage and take the carriage across to select your needles. Enter the second colour, press the multicolour button, and this is the section knitted. If you want to delete one of your patterns because you feel you no longer need it or you want to make room for a new one, this is the way you do it. Turn the machine on and the ready light comes on. Enter 777 for the card reading mode. Press the memory button and the pattern number light comes on. The machine is offering you a number for your new pattern, but you want to delete one you've already stored. So you enter the number of the pattern you wish to delete. 906, press CR, then press CR again to get the ready light back on again. You have now deleted pattern number 906. On the Brother 950i, you have an additional method of storing your patterns. You can use the Brother disk drive, which you plug into the port at the left edge of your machine. You can also use this port to plug in the PPD-110, that is the Brother pattern programming device. Now, Janet, we all know that things can go wrong, even with the most organised and professional knitter like yourself. So I think we ought to sort out one or two potential problems. What would I do, for example, if the cat had kicked over my yarn and the carriage had jammed in the middle of a row? Well, when you're knitting pattern knitting, you mean something like this. Yeah. <laughs> ah, yes. Well, the first thing you want to do is to press CR, which locks your pattern. Mm -hmm. Then you loosen the thumb screws and you remove the sinker plate. At the same time, you can remove your yarn. And loop it under the edge of your machine. Turn your change knob round 
to CR, and now you can lift the carriage off the needle bed. Put it down very carefully, making sure that it's well aligned, and turn your change knob back to NL. Remember you've cancelled your patterning button. Now we can put our sinker plate back on the front of the carriage. And we've finished that. But if we look at the knitting, we'll see all the needles are everywhere. <laughs> and we still have to get rid of our yarn, which is somewhere in the middle of the row. So we unravel it. Too difficult. A little bit of patience and it comes away quite easily. But we've still got our needles everywhere, so we'll push them all forward. Take the cast on cord that was in your box of accessories and we'll knit a row. That brings all our knitting back into the needle hooks and all we have to do is to unravel the cast on cord. Before we continue, we have to reset our pattern on the needles. The error light is still flashing, so we press CE to cancel that. Then we tell the machine we've unraveled one row and press CR. Take the carriage outside the turn mark, turn the change knob round to KC1, and push our part buttons in. Now we're ready to reselect our pattern needles. There we are. All we have to do is to re-thread and we can begin knitting again. That's not too complicated. So Janet, what are the doorbell rings? And I had to go down and answer it and I want to turn the machine off. That's certainly no problem. All you have to do is to turn the machine off. But you must remember, before you begin again, you must take the carriage outside the turn mark before you turn the machine on again. And then you can continue knitting. And what if I want to use a pattern variation switch? I'm not quite clear on that. Oh, I see what you mean. Perhaps you might want to knit one motif facing one way, mm -hmm. and then for the next repeat, you might want to turn it around. Yes, In other words, yes. you want to push switch number one up. Right. What you have to do is to watch your pattern panel window, and when you come to the row before the end, then you switch switch number one up, and when you've knit that last row, you're ready to begin with a pattern facing in the other direction. What if I'm doing lace patterning and I realise I've forgotten to knit two rows right in the middle of the pattern? Ah, that's a problem that we can often have. We seem to get carried away when we're using both carriages mm. and we sometimes miss the number in the panel and bring the carriage across by mistake. Mm -hmm. Well, what you do is you return your needles and you remove the lace carriage back to the left side of the machine and you knit the two rows you forgot. Now you've got to tell the machine that you want to go back two rows, so you press 2 and CR and you can begin knitting your lace again. And there's one problem I'm going to have, Janet, if I'm knitting a fair isle pattern and I come to the neckline. 
This is something that worries a lot of people. What we'll have to do is to knit one shoulder at a time. So we put the stitches for one side of our garment into holding position and we tell the carriage not to knit those needles in holding position. We turn our row counter back to zero and we continue to knit half our garment. Of course we do have to shape the neckline. So you're shaping as you go really there? That's right. When we've finished knitting one side, we can break the yarn and take that side off the knitting. We deactivate our row counter, mm -hmm. turn our patterning off, and we take the carriage across and remove that shoulder. Then we look at our row counter to see how many rows we've knit we enter that number in the panel and CR. Return those stitches for the second shoulder so that we can reset the needles. By knitting a row with a cord and then unraveling it. Take our carriage outside the turn mark and turn the change knob to KC1. Push the part buttons in because we want to reset our needles. And there we are, ready to continue knitting the second shoulder. And here's a sample of a knitted neckline. Well, Janet, thank you. That was an extremely comprehensive look at the wide range of facilities available in this magical machine. But I know we haven't quite finished. You've got something else up your sleeve, haven't you? I have. In addition to the 550 stitch patterns that we can see in the Stitch World book, there are some patterns that aren't pictured in the book, and we can find out about them on page 23 of the instruction manual. You can program a letter of the alphabet, switch number one must be up, and you enter the number when the pattern number light comes on. Number 601 to 626 are all capital letters, 10 stitches wide except for I, which is six stitches wide, and they're all 16 rows long. Number 627 to 653 are all lowercase letters, switch number one has still got to be up. Most are 10 stitches wide, except I and L, which are 6 stitches wide. J, K, R, T are 8 stitches wide, and F is 9 stitches wide. Most are all 12 rows long, except B, D, F, H, J, I, K, L, T, which are 16 rows long, and G is 14 rows long. Another useful pattern, number 703, gives us an automatic braid. To do this, we push needles orange 5 to green 6 forward to holding position. We push back to non-working position 1 and 2 orange and 2 and 3 green. We'll then e-wrap the rest of our needles. and knit a few rows. Turn the machine on and enter 990 for simple patterning. Press the memory button until the pattern number light comes on and we'll enter 703 for our automatic braid pattern. Press the memory button and the machine is ready to begin. Take the carriage outside the turn mark 
and turn the change knob to KC2. Now we've set our needles, we press our tuck buttons in and knit our automatic braid. This braid is 11 stitches wide and 6 rows long. And there's our automatic braid pattern. Well, that's lovely, Janet. Well, I hope that all of you watching this video will find it very useful in using your 950 machine and that you'll be able to tackle things with more confidence and with be a bit more adventurous about the garments that you make. Because really, with a 950, there is absolutely no limit.